Hi, welcome to the InterAxis YouTube channel, InterAxis.io. We're going to go uh, keep going with traditional finance, financial planning topics, and we're going to talk a little bit about risk. It's not ever the first thing that anyone wants to talk about, except probably uh, an insurance advisor. Okay, but risk, evaluating your risk as, in terms of your financial plan is so important um, be, because your risks are, are the things that can go wrong. And, and you can evaluate your risk in terms of things that can go wrong and have like a, a minor impact or things that have a major uh, economic and financial impact to you. And that should be the role of your financial advisor, your financial planner, to help you understand what some of those risks and are and to figure out how you can offset them or offload them or, or de-risk yourself. Or maybe you just decide to accept the risk. And the problem is everyone, in, when they start talking about financial advising and financial planning, all they think about is, I want to invest my money and have it grow. Um, but the problem is, if you're deciding how much to allocate, how much of your income, how much of your salary or, or your contracted amount or whatever it is to allocate to your future growth, you have to look at the risk. You have to look at what can go wrong and how much that potentially derails you. So what, what do I mean by that? What am I talking about? So let's say you have this, this great you know, financial investment plan, right, where I am putting money in every month right out of my paycheck and I'm putting as much as I can into my into you know say my retirement plan I'm maxing out my my retirement plan and I haven't evaluated any of the risks and I'm going okay I'm you know making x amount of dollars I'm paying my bills you know I got a little bit of savings everything else I'm throwing into my retirement plan because my my employer is maxing out my retirement plan and the market's growing at 20 percent a year and it's awesome right so I'm putting money in and it just looks like I am just growing like this and I'm and I look at my numbers out and I go look I'm you know 40 years old now when I'm 60 I'm gonna have several million dollars I'm doing so well right here's the problem if I haven't evaluated my risks I don't know what what can happen that might derail that because I'm going head on full on into in, into putting away as much as I can for my retirement which isn't overall a bad thing okay but but I haven't evaluated the financial impact of what can go wrong. So what, what can go wrong that might be small? Let's say somewhere in here, I, you know, have some have, have a car accident, right? And, and and whether I cause it or not, let's say that I have to get a new car, and that and that car is going to cost me forty thousand dollars. Well, somewhere in here, th this number drops down a little bit because I have to pay forty thousand dollars. Well, where is that forty thousand dollars going to come from? Is it going to come from my retirement plan? Well, if it does, there might be penalties and taxes and everything I have to, I have to pay. So, am I willing to do that? Um, I have to e evaluate things like uh, what happens if I get disabled. What happens if I can't work anymore, right? And my salary, my, my ability to earn an income goes down. H have I planned for that potential? It's a very it, it, it's a low risk. There's a low risk that it, it will happen, but if it happens, it could be financially devastating to me and my family. What happens, you know, in, in the worst case, if I die prematurely? What, what if I'm going along and I'm planning for retirement and I'm planning for college, but it's all predicated on the fact that I'm going to be here to continue to earn an income for my family and I'm not here anymore? This plan goes away right here and all this drops down. And now my family is counting on this for the rest of their life instead of our getting here. Am I okay with that? And the answer is I'm probably not. So I need to evaluate what my risks are and and do so in a way that I go, which are the ones that are financially potentially devastating? And then is there something I can do to transfer that risk? So we can potentially transfer risk and transferring risk is in the form of insurance. Right? We transfer it to an insurance company. An insurance company says, we will take on that premium. We, we will take on a premium. You pay us some amount of money, and if this bad thing happens to you, we're going to give you and or your family some money to, to uh, potentially make yourselves whole or help yourselves or whatever. Okay. So you need to understand um, your, your risks and why they're important. It's not always about getting your premium for insurance as low as possible. It's about making sure that the amount of potential benefit you would get from that insurance matches what your risk is. What do I mean by that? If I have um, a home, 
you know, if I, if I own a home, I probably want to get homeowner's insurance. If I have a mortgage, I have to get homeowner's insurance because, of, because the, the bank or whomever who owns that mortgage says you have to have insurance that if your house um, burns to the ground or whatever, you need to get the money because that is our collateral. Our collateral is at home, so you as a homeowner need homeowner's insurance. Now, there are a lot of people who, as soon as their home is, is paid for free and clear, they go, awesome, I don't need homeowner's any insurance anymore because the, the mortgage company isn't making me. But that's a, a horrible time to actually, in my opinion, to get rid of your homeowner's insurance because what you might have had is a, is a house, let's say you, you bought your house for $150,000, you, you've put in you know, years of, of paying the principal and interest and everything. You might have put in uh, $250,000, and let's say your house is now worth $350,000, right? You've paid two fifty dollars for a $350,000 house. It's free and clear. You're going, man, I don't need to pay several thousand dollars a year anymore in homeowner's insurance. This is great. You know, really, what are the odds my house, you know, there, there's a fire or something that destroys my house? Well, what if a fire does destroy your house? You have a $350,000 asset right now that has now gone down to virtually zero. Okay, that's actually financially devastating. That means you, it's, you somehow have to figure out another place to live. Uh, and, and it's not just the, you know, the value of your home. Like You either have to rebuild your house or find another place to live. This is financially devastating. This is why you have homeowner's insurance. Um, and then there's also small reasons, right? Let's say that you, there's a hailstorm in your area, or there's a water leak in your house, or something that costs you ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, and your homeowner's insurance, you know, comes in for you and says, "Look, you only have to pay five thousand dollars towards this repair, and we're going to pay the other fifteen and put you on a new roof," right? Well, that's really nice to have. So, so again, let's say I'm, I'm, you know, paying for my uh, on my house, I'm paying for my homeowner's insurance. Okay, and I might be paying a you know a few thousand dollars a year for homeowners insurance, and I, I get you know uh, roof damage from a hailstorm, and that's going to cost me you know they say it's going to cost you twenty thousand dollars for a new roof, right? And my deductible might only be five thousand dollars, so I'm I'm out of pocket five thousand dollars. Right, and I get a twenty thousand dollar roof. Now, that that basically means the insurance company gave me fifteen thousand dollars. Now, I don't know if you've ever bought or, or sold homes recently, but having a brand new roof on a house is actually a really attractive selling point because it means that if I buy a house that just had a roof replaced two years ago, whether the the current owners replaced, you know, paid for it or the insurance company paid for it, I don't care if it has a two year old roof. That's kind of that's an attractive point for me because that means absent any sort of hail hailstorm or anything, that roof is going to be on the house that I'm buying for for the next 15 years. It's, that's fantastic, right? So it's, so the twenty thousand dollar roof has probably increased the value of my home by maybe thirty or forty thousand dollars, right? And I've only had to come out of pocket five thousand plus whatever I've paid for homeowners insurance. So let's say that my homeowners insurance costs me three thousand dollars a year, and I got. Fifteen thousand dollars from the insurance company. Okay, so that's five years worth of premiums that that I've basically gotten back to put on a new roof. Does it, I, I I hope that makes sense to people, right? So if I was paying three thousand dollars a year premium, right, and of this twenty thousand dollar roof, I had to come out of pocket five thousand. So it's a fifth. It's basically the insurance company paid fifteen thousand dollars. That's divided by three thousand dollars. That's five years worth of premiums that I basically got back. Okay, that makes it more than worth it for me. So it's not always about your house burning down. It's about the little things that can go wrong. What if uh, I have a, a sister-in-law whose who's water heater busted twice and it flooded their house, and it's extremely expensive to to fix all that. But the insurance company came through twice and, and fixed it for them, and now they have a bunch of new stuff. It, it's great because when you go to, again, when you go to sell the house, you get to say, look, the, this wall has been replaced. These, this floor has been replaced. These are all new things. It, it actually increases the value of the home, and the insurance company basically paid for it. Now, you don't want bad things to happen to your house ever. You don't want bad things to happen to your car, or your family, or anything. 
But you also, if bad things happen, you also don't want to be out twenty thousand dollars personally for a new roof. You you're you might be okay being out five. This goes back to uh, a talk we had in, in a previous video about allocating towards an emergency fund. An emergency fund would be able to fund the five thousand dollars, and the insurance is coming in for the for the other twenty. Okay, so you want to transfer a lot of that risk onto an insurance company. Um, some other insurance that, that we might talk about is, are things like um, disability insurance. And again, I will, we, we will do videos on all these different types of insurance, right? But some, some of the important ones are disability. Disability insurance basically says if I can't work, Right, if I am too sick or injured to work anymore, and I have counted, my financial plan has counted on my ability to earn an income, and I can no longer earn that income through no fault of my own, I'm sick or I'm injured or something, disability insurance pays me an income during that time, and that time could be anywhere from a few months to the rest of my life. That's extremely important because, again, when, when we look at, at this, and this is my financial plan, right, where hopefully my, my net worth, this is my net worth, is growing throughout my life, and right here I get hit with disability. I can't work anymore. Well, the, the insurance kicks in and, and continues potentially to pay into this and keeps growing my net worth. At least it doesn't make it go down. Maybe it doesn't grow at that rate. Maybe it's here, but at least I can continue my life. It's what we call a self-completing plan. Okay, And we have to identify all these particular risks. This is hopefully what a good financial advisor, a good financial planner will help you with. Identify what are your particular risks. What can go wrong in your life that will make this not go up and to the right for the rest of your life. What could potentially happen? And then are there ways that we can ensure this to make sure that if those financial catastrophes happen, that at least you continue to go up and to the right? It may not be at the same level, but at least it goes up and to the right. Now, what happens, and the reason most people don't like insurance, is because a lot of the premiums you pay, if you never use that insurance, you don't get that money back. Okay, yes, if, if for most of them, if you don't use them, you, you, you lose it. And what it means is, hey, if I didn't pay for any insurance, th this, is, this is my curve, right? This is how my money's going. If I pay for that insurance, it doesn't go up quite as much, but at least I've protected all the potential downside. I can sleep at night. My family can sleep at night. We know that if bad things happen, we're well taken care of. That is, is what the risk is all about. Now, there might be small risks, right? There might be risks that we can't insure and we need to, to figure out what to do with. But for right now, uh, I'm, I'm talking about some of the risks that we can insure. So what else can we insure? We can obviously insure life, right? Life insurance is a big one. We'll definitely have you know some several videos about life insurance and how important it can be in this self-completing plan. Life insurance is what happens if I die prematurely. How else can life insurance be used in my overall planning? So there's what happens not if I die, when I die, but if I die prematurely. We need to take that risk into account. We need to take homeowners associate home homeowner's insurance into account. What happens if something happens to my home? Again, homeowner's insurance is something that you have to have if you have a mortgage usually, but mo a lot of people try to go as cheap as they can. So we'll talk about um, how important homeowner's insurance is and why it's not always best to get the cheapest possible. You really need to look at your coverage. You need to have a really good uh, insurance agent to look at all your all of your coverage and make sure that it fits your house and fits what you want because some homeowners insurance um, the the coverage will only for instance if your if your home burned to the ground it will it will just pay you enough to rebuild your house some will just give you the money that your house was worth before and you can do with it what you want you can sell the land and go live somewhere else so you know that's very different um, obviously your auto insurance right this is another one where Everyone might try to go really, really low, you know, lowest price, lowest cost possible, which you have to determine what fits your budget. But there are times when uh, auto insurance, you might pay a little bit more, but if your insurance agent was really good, it comes in handy. An example I have is, and, and I'll talk about this in, in, in another topic in just a moment, but an example I have is I had a car that flooded because we had a flood here in, in Houston and we had a car that flooded. And I didn't even know this, but my insurance agent put a little clause that I paid like five extra bucks a month for 
in my insurance policy that said if I had a leased car, that the insurance company would completely buy out the rest of the lease. It didn't matter how, what the car was worth at the time. Well, the car was only three months old, and we happened to have a flood here in Texas, and that car flooded, and I would have had to pay probably $10,000 had I not had that one little clause that probably cost me five or 10 extra bucks a month. And if I were going for the lowest price possible, I'd have gone, well, what are the chances that that happens? I'm going to take my chances and keep that extra 10 bucks, right? But since my insurance agent said, well, you know, this is a good thing to have, um, it probably saved me about $10,000 uh, on, on that car. Um, depending on where you are, I'm, I'm in, in Houston, flood insurance is a big one. Uh, unfortunately, near and dear to my heart, my house actually did flood in Hurricane Harvey. Um, and we, we got quite a bit of money back from the insurance company uh, to you know, replace the contents that, that we lost. It didn't even come close to replacing all the contents we lost to um, enough money to put our house back together virtually the way it was. Um, so flood insurance is a big one, and, and it goes kind of with homeowners, where people, you know, if you don't have a mortgage or you don't live in a certain area, you might not need flood insurance. Uh, I recommend to everyone who lives here, where, where I live, you always get flood insurance no matter what, because you never know when you're going to flood. And if you do, it is devastating, and flood is not covered under traditional homeowners insurance policies. So, a, you know, flood insurance is, is important to, depending on where you live, and depending on where you live, you might get tornado insurance or hail insurance or something something different based on where you on on where you live um, uh, a big one that's not talked about probably enough is liability insurance liability insurance basically says that if I get sued for any reason liability insurance is going to kick in and and help me out now I have some liability with my homeowners I have some liability with my auto right which basically says if someone gets injured at my house, and sues me, my homeowner is going to kick in some, but then my liability will kick in a lot more. Okay, because you know, imagine someone you know goes into the pool at my house and their their kid gets hurt or something, um, gets hurt climbing a tree at my house, and they sue me because it was on my property. They can do that, okay, but I want my liability insurance to kick in and and, and help me out because if someone sues me for half a million dollars or a million dollars. Um, I want to have this insurance to say, okay, we'll, we'll cover that. The other nice thing about liability insurance, and, and this covers you whether it's at your home, your car, you know, whether you're driving and you cause an accident, liability insurance can kick in above and beyond what your auto insurance is. And yeah, it costs you a little bit per month or per year, but it's well worth it to protect you know, half a million or a million dollars or whatever so that you don't have to do it. The other great thing about liability insurance is if you get sued, they usually cover the cost of the attorney. Why is that? Because they don't like to lose. Okay, so they're going to hire a really good attorney for you because you have this liability insurance. So this is almost like prepaid legal for if you get sued for any sort of liability reasons. Okay, so these are really good insurance products to have, and it's ideal if you talk to your financial planner, financial advisor, and get them to evaluate what all your different risks are and what it's worth to spend on premiums for all these to make sure that if something catastrophic happens financially, that you and your family aren't incredibly hurt. And yes, it, it takes away a little bit from that growth, that up and to the right movement, it takes away a little bit from that. But if you have some sort of financially devastating um, occurrence in your life, it could really save you financially and make sure that, that you get to um, keep going up and to the right, that your family gets to keep living the way you want to keep living, that the lifestyle you've become accustomed to, you get to keep because you, you've transferred some of that, that risk away. Okay, so these are the, some of the important insurances we have. Now, you can evaluate other risks. What, are the, what is the risk uh, that I you know, lose my job or something? Well, there's not really insurance for that. But it's something that you, you just kind of accept, but maybe you address that in a different way. So maybe the way you address the risk of losing my job is I keep more of an emergency fund. I have more money that I can access more readily if I need it. Maybe I have multiple streams of income. Maybe part of my investments is I invest in, in real estate or something that continues to give me another source of income. Maybe that's how I evaluate um, or, or, or address some of those risks that are not that I'm not able to transfer through the use of insurance. 
Um, you might, when you get really complex in terms of your investments, you might go, okay, I have some investments that are that, that, that carry some risk and I might be able to hedge that risk with options or, or other types of hedges. Um, so you really want to evaluate uh, all the different risks. You might say, okay, what's the risk if, if I'm, for instance, I'm in Texas, right? A lot of oil and gas people here. And, and I might say, well, my business or, or my job is predicated on the, the price of oil going up or staying up or something. So I might go, okay, I'm going to make sure that my, my risk is if the price of oil goes down, I might lose my job or my income might go down significantly. I might get bonuses every year and my bonus might be tied to the price of oil or the performance of, a co of the company. So what can I do to de-risk myself a little bit? Well, I don't necessarily want to be 100% invested in oil if I work for an oil and gas company because then everything I have is tied to the price of oil, right? So I might want to go, okay, I either want to invest in something else that is completely different from oil, like gold or real estate or something. Or I might say, I want to you know, hedge myself and invest in the inverse of oil, right? So if, if oil prices go down, I actually make money. I might want to do that. But that's something I talk to my financial advisor, talk to my financial planner about and figure out how to address some of the risks I have. It's not fun topics. No one likes to talk about what could go wrong in my, in my financial life or in my life. But it's just, it's, it, it's some, it's some discussions you have to have. It, and it could be little things like, what happens if I need to work five more years towards my retirement? What happens if I lose my job or my company, you know, lets me go at age 65 and I'm kind of too old to go get another job that can, you know, like I had planned to work till 75. That was my financial plan. But what happens if I lose my job at 65? Well, at 65, it might be harder to go get another job that provides me the same level of income. What happens if I'm saving for college? If I say, okay, I'm going to save from, for college for my daughter and she decides she don't want to go to college or it's best for her not to go to college then I have to evaluate, okay, what's the risk of that college savings plan? What is the risk to me of saving specifically in that college bucket? And, and again, everyone is going to have their own risks. There is no one-size-fits-all plan. There is no rule of thumb that, that encompasses everybody. You, if you're doing your financial planning on your own or you're doing it with an advisor, which hopefully you're doing it with an advisor, if you can, you really have to identify what are my risks, what can go wrong in my plan, and figure out how you can address those, obviously in a cost-effective manner, but addressing the risks. If, you're, if you look at your financial plan as a house, if you look at it as a pyramid, whatever other uh, analogies we like to make in the financial planning world, this is the foundation. Because the foundation says, you know, if, if you're building your house, no one likes building the foundation. This is not sexy. No one looks at it. No one cares. No one walks into your house and goes, man, that's a beautiful foundation you have. But you know what? If the foundation is right, you can build whatever else you want on top of it, right? So we build the foundation. The foundation is how much do you have in, in your emergency fund? How much do you have in protection? How much have you protected yourself? So if something over here crumbles, if, if this falls apart, if hail hits the roof, if a flood comes, if a tornado comes, if something else happens to your, to your physical home or your financial home, we got the foundation taken care of and we can build whatever we want on top of it. If you don't have a foundation and you're just putting your, your house directly on the ground, there are lots of things that can go wrong. Um, so we don't like to build the sizzle, the, the great parts, the beautiful parts of the house before we built a perfect, great foundation. So that's the video. That, that's what we want to talk about right now, financial planning risk. Uh, talked a little bit about insurance hedges, but, but the discussion of risk is really important. It's not fun, but you really need to have it when you start talking about planning for your, your financial future. We're going to go into all these, these different insurance topics and all these different types of insurance in, in future videos. Um, hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel. You'll see some of those. You'll send me some uh, emails or hit me on Twitter or something and let me know what else you'd like to discuss. Uh, and if there's a particular video we need to do, we believe me, we will do it because we, we enjoy educating you about this. So um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Email is info at interaxis.io. Twitter at interaxis8, the number 8. We'll see you in the next video.